How can we make better cities than ever were? Better workplaces, better schools. How can we immerse ourselves in nature every day instead of thinking we, we have to get in a, an SUV and drive 50 miles you know, to find it? it ought to be, we ought to be immersed in it. It ought to be part of our life. People cannot seem to walk by this wall without interacting with it in some, in some way. Looking up at it, touching it, feeling it, taking a picture of it, putting kids and family uh, in front of it and taking a picture, as this family is doing. Um, it's, in some ways, it's a bigger attraction than the Eiffel Tower. I spent a lot of time thinking about how we can actually literally green cities. How, how do we incorporate nature into cities, towns, uh, the built, built environment? We have this sort of bias in this country that if you want nature, you can't have a city, that these are kind of polar uh, opposites. It's part of what we are as a species, is to, is to be interested in the world around us and, and the nature around us and, and, and this, this particular place in the middle of a city. People are coming together to watch bats fly off and feed. It's See? really cool that you're like in a big urban city and there's like a bridge here that like people drive their cars over every single day and then there's like a little natural wonder, you know, like part of nature like nestled in the bridge, you know, and so like all these city people come out to come view it. I think that's cool. Part of our, uh, of our separation from nature is that we thought nature is, well, something that over there. And where we live is not nature. And especially if we live in a city, it's not nature. And we, we'll go visit nature and we'll go experience nature in Yellowstone Park. But in terms of ongoing human experience, we need everyday nature. We need ordinary nature. We need nature as an integral and ongoing part of our everyday lives. However smart techniques have been applied to lower the energy juice or, you know, uh, to transport people or whatever, these systems won't work unless the people living here really love their neighborhood. In some of our European cities, one of the reasons why I think they're far more sustainable is not because they're using energy efficient systems necessarily, although we like them to do so, but because people take such an investment in those places that they recycle in generation after generation. And if you start to look at those places, what makes people develop that sense of attachment, responsibility, and stewardship for those places that motivates them to recycle generation after generation? You see, they're replete with biophilic elements in their scale, in their materials, and their shapes and forms which mimic and simulate natural patterns. Why don't we build a wall together with the children? So every year, the children from group eight, who are 12 years old, leave the primary school. That is, they start, they build a piece of the wall together with their parents, mm. with a real mason as a guide. Oh, really? And they made all, all these uh, tiles with their names on it. Hey, what exactly are you doing? We take the weed out. Taking, yeah. You're weeding the, the roof? Just a little, yes. You have to do that? Uh, once, twice a year now. So. It's beautiful. Oh, it's, uh, Is it's it easy nice to do? To see it so close. You don't fall off the roof oh, ever. No. Now you're up a higher. Yeah. <laughs> Is the roof doing well? Is it healthy? Yes. Yes, very. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you don't have to water the roof. No. no. This is pretty much our standard green roof. Um, our extensive green roof, which is a prefabricated mat, which we buy in meter square, and we just stick them up on the roof. Okay. Um, and if you look at this, we have a right down at the bottom. This is a recycled car seats like a polyurethane urethane filling from car seats, oh which just helps to uh, absorb some more water, which is good for the plants. And if you add on to that issues around uh, energy use in the buildings, particularly for cooling, um, then it starts, starts to get quite interesting. Because of global warming and all these major issues we face, everything must change in the next 40 years. We'll need new kinds of agriculture already beginning, new kinds of uh, energy, of course, already beginning, new kinds of urban design and architecture already beginning with green urbanism and biophilic design, already beginning. Everything must change. So this hospital will really be...